Welcome back, everyone. We hope you had an enjoyable lunch. Now we will begin the afternoon presentations with a team from the Arizona University, made up of Veronica Ogilvy from Costa Rica, Yusra Abudinhap from Egypt, Anur Ural from Turkey, Wen Wen from China, Dr. Jill Kastek from the United States, and I believe we have uh, a couple, one or a couple of guests uh, that will be joining us today. Um, I believe that is uh, Suzanne Pineda, and I believe that's the one that I'm missing, I believe. I apologize in advance if I mispronounced any of the last names. Um, this team will present immersive global learning, unleashing the potential of virtual field experiences. Veronica Ogilve is a doctoral candidate at the University of Arizona, pursuing an interdisciplinary degree in second language acquisition and teaching, SLAT, with a minor in teaching, learning, and sociocultural studies, TLS. She specializes in second language acquisition, digital literacies, teaching and learning, and digital equity. Veronica has made connections across several disciplines, including the SLAT program, College of Education, K-12 schools, and community-based organizations in Tucson. She's collaborating in multiple projects to connect second language teaching and learning to the interdisciplinary areas of digital literacies, equity, and inclusion, and community making, which includes STEM and the arts. So please let us welcome the team from the Arizona University. Thank you for this introduction. And I wanted to add that I'm also a professor at UNED. I'm really, really excited to be here with you in this wonderful seminar. And I want to um, also thank everybody from my team to be uh, for being here and sharing everything that we have, uh, uh, everything we have done during these past two years and the invited teacher, Susan Pineda. So before we start, um, Jusra, can you share your screen, please? We want to acknowledge that our work, research, and writing took place on the land and territories of the Tohono O'odham and Paskijaki people, as our research is closely related to the idea of place through its connection to diverse communities living in Tucson, Arizona, we feel it is of the utmost importance to not only name this as a fact, but also to do our best to be in balance with these communities. Now, where are we heading today? Well, enjoy a beautiful picture of Tucson, Arizona first. Where are we heading today? We, um, this presentation is divided into three stages. First, we're going to talk about research-based principles. We have worked in this project, uh, virtual field experiences in worlds of experience for two years, where we have had this professional learning series in, in multiple um, uh, research. Then we're going to, uh, well, from this research, we uh, got some valuable outcomes some principles that are very practical so you can actually adapt them to, to your classrooms. We're going to see some illustri illustrative examples of VFEs, virtual field experiences, uh, just to see these principles come to life. And also we're going to listen to Suzanne Pineda talking about her implementation process, her creation process and design, and work with her students. The context of this um, research that we have done, uh, next slide, please, is um, it's a two-year 
learning series and research initiative with K-12 and community college educators. It consisted of six virtual se sessions with uh, different cohorts. We got together on Saturdays, two days where we had discussions, conversations, spaces for creation of virtual field experiences. Um, and 40 teachers participated in this uh, learning series from different states, nations, and language groups. Teachers from all over the place and different languages, of course. This project was centered in three main objectives. Next slide, please. Literacy and technology, teaching and learning, language and culture. So literacy and technology, because we're using implementing this instructional approach, which is virtual field experiences, which I'm gonna explain in a minute. Teaching and learning because we're uh, bringing an approach that is innovative using immersive technologies for language learning. And also language and culture connecting, helping the students connect to the world outside through the exploration of experiences uh, that expand their worldviews. And as I mentioned before, virtual field experiences, short form VFEs, uh, they are digital experiences to generate global and local connections, engage in international culture, cultural content development in the form of uh, field experiences that are immersive. We're going to look at one example of a VFE just for you to get a better idea of what it looks like. So I am the creator of this example. Some of you might be familiar with this place, Plaza de la Cultura in San Jose downtown. This is a very iconic place where we have had many stories and, and experiences in. So you get into the experience, you get to a landing page that has a 360 view, and you can see the people walking around, the landmarks, for example, the National Theater there, the Pops, uh, an ice cream place that is very famous in Costa Rica. You can see the lottery vendors, people walking around doing their shopping. So this is the, the landing page in the design of this experience. Um, if we go to the right where the lottery uh, vendor is, uh, we can see, for example, some music. Well, let's go back uh, just right, just a little bit. We got into the central market. <laughs> so if we come outside and we go to the lottery vendor, you see that there are different hotspots around the 360 image. Each hotspot takes you to a different experience. Uh, in one of the corners, there's a lottery vendor. You can see the lottery ticket uh, on the left-hand side. Uh, some background music, you see that the ticket says, eh, please take care of the animals, eh, take, on, take care of, of the animals. So this reflects a little bit more about the Costa Rican culture, which is uh, focused on being eco-friendly and taking, taking care of living beings, right? So let's go to the market now so we can get an idea. If we go down, if we keep on walking, like feeling that we're there, this is a life in the day of uh, Costa Rica. We get to the central market. There we have a 360 image. We can look around. We see the people sitting in the cafeteria next to each other, strangers sitting next to each other and possibly talking about everyday topics. You see all the ingredients that grandmas use for remedies. Uh, people buying the things, you see the vendor there, uh, the names of the products that the vendor uh, sells. If you hover over the names of the products, you can see the names in Spanish and English. And if you were to go to San Jose downtown right now and go to the central market, you will see the same scene. Uh, maybe even with the same person who has been there for years and that all of us uh, get to know because we go buy things to this market. So it is an immersive experience uh, in which you can 
include different hotspots with different resources uh, in activities, interactive activities for your students to explore. So if you click on the green one, uh, the, the arrow, we keep on moving around. So it is it gives you a feeling of being there. There's an embodied feeling, right? You see the bus depot there, you can go to Playa Bochinche and explore the nature, get more information. You can go to the Coronado Church. So as a teacher and designer, you decide which experiences you want the students uh, to have. Now let's go to the next slide, Joshua, please. So, Thinking about the San Jose example, the virtual field experience, we're going to just take a minute to reflect and connect. What did you notice? What did you enjoy? And what did you find exciting about this experience? I'm gonna give you one minute to think about it. If, uh, if you want, you can share with others in, in the form of text or talk to the person next to you. So there are, as, as it is mentioned, there are choices that can be explored. So it is, it is a feeling of like, choose your own adventure. As, as a student, you go where you wanna uh, go. And you have this freedom and agency to explore the place in a very personalized manner. Also, it's something that I noticed uh, you can look at the different stories. It's not just about like learning vocabulary or grammar. You know the stories behind uh, all the products that are there. Uh, you can pay attention to little details, cultural details that we might not be able to see if we just have like traditional exercises. You can feel as if you're there, if you're walking around, there's this feeling of... Uh, being able to move freely from one place to the other. So it increases uh, mobility. Okay. As it is mentioned, there are a lot of images so you can actually see what is going on and connect the language to a real thing. As I mentioned before, there are different principles in, in these two years that we have been doing research about virtual field experiences. We have um, gotten some outcomes that are a, that you can adapt and use in your classrooms. Even if you don't create a VFE, you, you can use these principles, right? What we're going to do right now is uh, the 10 principles, we're going to illustrate them using virtual field experiences. The first three principles are related to the San Jose example. So the first one in the next slide is language learning is about customizing learning through creativity, design, and interactivity. So in this case, rather than following just one size fits all approach, these language learners that uh, participate in this experience are encouraged to explore and engage with the language in a personalized and interactive way. The next principle is related to language learning being uh, becoming part of the global community. Through the use and design of VFEs, students can, can feel like they're like in the market. They're in the market and they can see the people around, they see the stores, they can get a glimpse of how people behave maybe. So language learning is more than just acquiring linguistic skills. It's, it's a means to becoming an integral part of the global community. So language becomes a powerful tool for cultural exchange, enabling individuals to appreciate the differences traditions, beliefs, and values that different communities have 
it allows them to step outside their own cultural boundaries and, and be more, um, when they're exposed to this richness and diversity, they're more sensitive and respond, respectful towards other um, communities. And the next principle is related to developing multiple literacy for meaning making. So as I mentioned before, it's more than just talking about linguistic skills. It is a being able to acquire various literacies like critical thinking, cultural awareness, digital literacies when they're creators and actually when they're exploring the, the, the experience and also media literacy. So they learn to navigate different contexts, understand nuances mm -hmm. and infer meaning from different sources. So it is very important right now um, to think about that. It is not just about reading and writing or thinking about skills in isolation. It's about knowing that language is action and language happens in a context, in a place. Now, uh, Joshua is gonna exemplify the next three principles uh, with another VFE. Thank you, Vero. So we're going to look at um, the cross-cultural Easter VFE that was created by Anne Hagerson. Uh, that was is one of was on, one of our teachers um, in the world of experience. Um, Anne Hagerson is a virtual educator for the U.S. State Department uh, for English language programs, and she teaches pre-service teachers uh, uh, in Mexico. She created the Cross-Cultural Easter uh, VFE, and the purpose of this VFE is to promote mutual understanding and cross-cultural exchange through a multimodal approach to teaching. So she presents the Easter traditions from three, uh, in three different cultures, and these are the U.S., in Sonora, Mexico, and in Spain. I'm going to show uh, an example from each of those, um, an example or a tradition from each of those three locations. So let's take a look at Easter in the United States. As we see, it's very interactive and engaging. It engages uh, a, the, the learner with different things, the music, the video, um, and then when we look at this tag, uh, the Easter egg hunt poem, we see that it allows, uh, when we click on the blue button here, we see that uh, there is an embedded um, activity that allows the learners to, or invites the learners to read the poem aloud and record a response, an oral response. So these activities contextualize language learning. We'll take a quick look, an example from uh, Sonora, Mexico. We see here the collage of images. Um, of course, each one of these represents a tradition, um, a, a cultural tradition or a re religious tradition. Um, in Mexico, The uh, deer dance is a popular dance that represents the cultural ways of celebrating Easter in Sonora. Um, and we find this information embedded in a way that engages the learners uh, with looking at the images and reading the, uh, the information and, and also learning about uh, uh, the ways uh, Easter is celebrated in uh, Mexico. And last, let's look at an example in Spain. So in Spain, again, another collage that represents different traditions uh, that are uh, in, that celebrates uh, Easter in Spain. So we're going to listen to Anne's uh, voice reading the information here about the egg, the chocolate egg uh, tradition in Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so we see that we, we can, the teachers also can add their own voice uh, to engage learners with the text um, uh, through VFEs as well. So in this example, in this VFE, there were three principles for language learning uh, that were illustrated in, in this VFE. So the, uh, the, the, the VFE follows learners' interests and curiosities and allows them to learn through multiple modes, through images, um, through videos, and, and using their senses as well. Uh, the learners experience real-world activities that are authentic um, for cultural understanding and opportunities to, for cultural immersion. Um, and the third principle here is that the teachers could contextualize activities that makes uh, learning fun and helps learners to make connections across cultures and uh, languages. So we'll, we'll take a minute to pause and wonder. Uh, you may add your thoughts in the chat or chat with someone next to you if you're in person. Um, think about how is language learning contextualized through VFEs? Um, some of you might think about how learners could practice oral language skills um, in a contextualized way. Um, as we saw in Anne's VFE, the, uh, she invited learners to read a poem and record a response. So they are using, um, they're utilizing their oral language skills. The contextualized activities uh, also provides an opportunity to showcase culture and human activities, such as the egg hunt in the US um, tradition, Easter tra tradition. Um, learners got to see how children find the eggs, collect them. Um, and, and this way learners get to see the actions that comes along with, with, the, with the tradition of egg hunt. Um, and, and in the images, um, each of the picture, pictures represented the traditions in each uh, country, uh, which carries meaning. Um, and, and images also provide context and, and prompt question. Uh, so learners interact with the images um, in, in a meaningful way and um, encourages them to use um, language and inquire about um, uh, the different activities and the traditions uh, in each uh, culture, um, which creates a mutual understanding across cultures. And uh, now we're going to see uh, the next three principles. Uh, when we'll introduce uh, those three principles next. Yeah, thank you, Yusora. And uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to introduce another VFE project. So let's look at the other VFE project, which was created by teacher Emily Burris. Uh, Emily Burris is a high school French teacher um, and she teaches in the states of North Carolina uh, in the United States. And she's not only a passionate educator, but also a program leader in a nonprofit organization which promotes cross cultural and international education exchange. Um, so, in this VFE project, uh, let's click on the link to uh, delve into her project. Yeah, her project is Experience Haiti. Uh, in this project, Emily aimed to let her students really experience and explore uh, a French speaking country, um, Haiti. So Emily incorporated different resources in the media to uh, make an immersive experience. For example, she used a timeline to tell the history of Haiti uh, you can um, see those images um, in the text. Got it. Who's Carl? Who's Carl? Who's Carl? Carl? Yeah. And also, she also introduced uh, the language that used in Haiti, um, French and the uh, Creole. And also, she used this 360 image to depict different things in Haiti from 
off the street view. Yeah, let's look at this 360 image. Um, the image illustrates ordinary people and the soldiers uh, in the streets. So from this image, we can experience the daily life in Haiti. Uh, although we see many soldiers in the street, but also we see the fishermen working and a lady selling goods. And also people are talking and socializing in the streets. So we can experience um, this kind of life in, in Haiti. So let's go back and uh, look at another 360 image. Yeah. Um, it portrays a house in Haiti. We can hear the sound. Yeah, if we walk around, we can see the decorations, the food, um, the pool in the house and also we enjoy the natural beauties the forest and the beach and ocean and also we can see the roof of the house um it's made by banana leaves and i, I think it's very eco-friendly and it represents uh, people's attitude towards life and uh, um and the nature so now we can really understand how people live in Haiti and what's the life conditions in there. That's a very beautiful house and which really immersed uh, us to Haiti. So Emily portrayed Haiti from very different perspectives through use of multiple media and the resources. So we can enjoy the um, beauty of the natural resources and also we can see people's living conditions and the, we also know their political crisis that happened in Haiti. So as educators, we really want our students to travel there uh, even though they couldn't physically uh, be there. Uh, we want to create uh, experiential learning experience for our students and encourage them to form their own perspectives. So it's not only about tourist thing, but the things about culture, and then we can go deeper to understand the culture and the language. Yeah, we can see the Haiti from the um, bird view. That's really um, immersive and uh, contextualized. And now we can go back and uh, look at another three principles about language learning. Yeah, first we ended we want to understand the different cultures, perspectives, and the global concept. We understand in language learning, we want to develop our ability to understand the different perspectives and the cultures. From Haiti example, we see different aspects of culture and the people's <coughs> lives. Good things, bad things. We try to understand those important global concepts, such as like world peace, such as um, something about refugees, something about uh, humanitarianism. So we want to understand those global, um, very important concept from learning another language and learning the world. And also we want to create uh, opportunities to travel without traveling. Yeah, we want to create this immersive experience uh, for students, like they are there, they are um, virtually there. <laughs> And we open up the door to students, let them see, appreciate, and embrace the language varieties. French are not only spoken in France, but also in Africa, in Latin America. We hope to respect all people lived experience in the language varieties in different um, corners of the world. So let's pause and ponder 
um, how does the VF experience su support accessibility and the linguistic diversity in language learning? You can share it with your neighbors or uh, feel free to type in the chat box. We would love to see your opinions and your thoughts. Yeah, we can see that from this Haiti experience, we often incorporate visual and multimedia elements such as images, videos, and uh, interactive simulations, which really enhance our understanding and engagement. So we want to create this accessibility for learners in different countries with different language backgrounds. We want to sub support this accessibility for all different kinds of learners. And also, yes, in this virtual experience um, can simulate a real world language usage by providing a authentic context, right? And a cultural immersion. So learners can virtually explore different cultural settings, uh, hear what local people talk, and communicate in a realist scenario. And all those things uh, help us to develop a deeper understanding of the language and the culture. Yeah, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Yeah. Another uh, principle, if we go to the next slide, please, is designing. This is principle number 10. And it is designing multimodal experiences through experiential learning. In classrooms, we do everything possible to facilitate learning uh, for our students. So we could have like handouts like the one we see there with vocabulary words and definitions. Sometimes we bring handouts that are just like taken from internet, authentic resources, right? But the VFE Pro provides something a little bit more, well, different with more layers. And the layers are the different modes like audio, images, 360 images, um, spaces where they have interaction. So not in isolation, uh, the whole experience is made up all of these of all these uh, combination of modes that has been carefully designed by the teachers and, and the students too. So we're going to look at one uh, example created by Wei Lai. This is called the Taiwanese breakfast. So her main objective is to make us feel that we are there, that we have this food right in front of us, which looks really delicious. And she wants to teach us a little bit more about the types of breakfast they have in Taiwan. Sometimes they have breakfast at home. Sometimes they have breakfast on the go. There are different shops that sell different products that are Western, like, for example, the French fries or more traditional. So if you hover over the, the hotspots, you will see the descriptions in Mandarin of the pro, uh, the names of the products in Mandarin, you can see the uh, the description a little bit more information about how they eat it, what it is made of. So the combination of images, this text, all the semiotic resources, give you uh, a lot of support when it comes to meaning making. So. She also uses different resources, external resources. For example, the Instagram, the Instagram page. Um, it takes you to a real menu on Instagram where you can see uh, menu pictures of the different products. You can see the conversation of people who talk about the, the different dishes for breakfast. So students have the opportunity to go to these authentic conversations outside of, of the classroom. They can also go to like more control exercises in, in, in the San Jose example. I, 
I was sharing that if this one was an example, you can go to a Padlet where you ask students to talk about San Jose, uh, their perspectives, what they want to learn, what they notice, et cetera. So it is the same here, right? Um, you give the students the opportunity to communicate with each other. In this connection, um, provides a lot of opportunities for using the language meaningfully in, in for a real purpose. So the next slide, please. In the next slide, we're going to pause and ponder how are VFEs different from other kinds of language learning activities? So we have the traditional exercises. Now think about the VFEs. So some of you might be thinking the VFEs provide the context for language use, which is very authentic. It is not forced, it is natural, right? It, it provides an opportunity for people to feel that they're there in the place, experience. With the Taiwanese breakfast, we are just sitting there on the table. You actually feel like you can choose the products that you want. Uh, so it, it makes you feel that you're uh, immersed there. The images, the combination of images uh, with sounds and different activities help you to understand more the concepts that are being discussed. Uh, and at the same time, enjoy this beautiful experience. Uh, you have the freedom to go uh, to different places. Next slide, please. So we have come, uh, come up with these 10 principles, right, for language learning. Uh, this is part of a journey that we have had for two years in which we have participated with different uh, uh, partners like Circle, the Cer uh, Center for Educational Resources and Culture, Language and Literacy, the East Asian Studies, Latin American Studies, Middle Eastern Studies, the Digital Innovation and Learning Lab. And we wanna share with you these principles that can be applied to other situations. Like for example, you have to promote uh, creativity as a way of uh, learning a, a language through design and, and interactivity. You have to help your students become part of the global community, not just knowing what is around them, but knowing that they're many ways of thinking, many ways of doing, um, becoming more sensitive and respectful to the global community, um, using multiple literacies to make meaning, uh, digital literacy is critical thinking skills, using the learner's interest to anchor, um, to anchor the, their learning. So giving them freedom to choose what they wanna learn, uh, opportunities to experience different situations and letting them be on the driver's seat. Using real world activities, uh, understanding different cultures, creating these opportunities to travel without traveling, which responds also to a, a social justice responsibility that we have as teachers. And also embracing all language varieties, uh, all dialects, and languages are equally valid. There's not like one more important than the other. And that's something that we have to keep in mind in, uh, as we plan our classes and create the language learning activities for our students. Now I'm going to uh, introduce to you um, one teacher. Next slide, please. We have Suzanne Pineda. We are so honored to have her here. She's such a committed and wonderful teacher. She holds nearly 12 years of experience in the educational field, with eight of those years being a fifth grade teacher. She holds a master's degree in professional learning communities, and she has had the opportunity to work in the classroom in different leadership positions that have inspired her to become a principal. Suzanne, please uh, 
share with us uh, your experience using virtual field experiences as an instructional approach. First and foremost, hi everyone. I'm very happy to be here presenting to you today. I'm, I'm a fifth grade teacher. My school is on the border of the United States and Mexico. My students commute to the USA daily. I have some families that live in Mexico. And my fifth grade students are primarily Spanish speakers learning English as their second language. We have many English language learners. Um, those are students who come from non-English speaking homes and who are learning the English language at our school. And I created a VF, uh, VFEs with my students so that they can learn how to accept Mexican American traditions. And now we are going to explore some of the VFEs that my students created. So this project that you see here, it is a VFE created by one of my students. And here, my English language learners, they learn how to make language connections across the curriculum that we have. Um, so we are going to be listening to their story of what it meant to them to be Mexican American. So we cannot hear the audio, but here we have the students learned how to learn how to do audio, um, write audio, write the audio, the script, and and then they learn how to orally rehearse it and integrate that into their VFE. So they were able to tell their story of what it meant to them to be Mexican American through through their VFE. Now, all of these were standard based topics. So what I did is I got standard based topics that were already integrated into our curriculum. And at the same time, they were also learning vocabulary terms that were part of Mexico and that were part of America. Now here in our in our VFE, we we are going to see the immigration story from their family members. So my my students, um, I had assigned to them to interview someone who had immigrated here to the United States and they, they were able to interview and learn their story. Now, they created, once they had that interview and they learned their story, my students created a biography and, and wrote the story of that person. They, my English language learners wrote that in English and then they were also able to write that in Spanish. So all of that was, um, transfer to both languages. So here um, we see that we're scrolling. So the top text is in English and the bottom text is in Spanish. And that is the translation. The image that you see here is a narrative. So they actually created their the narrative of the person that they interviewed. So what does that person look like to them? So they they wrote, they created that image and half of the image is the American traditions that that person adopted and the Mexican traditions that that person adopted. And to the side of that, we see the actual image of what that person looks like. So this, this person is the grandmother of one of my students and my, my student was able to learn the story of her grandmother and how now she is here in the United States and how and how she is living now, um, is still practicing the Mexican tradition, uh, Mexican traditions, and how now she adopted the American traditions. And we also have an another immigration story from another one, another student. 
And this student, she interviewed her own mother. So she was able to learn the story of her mother. She cre she made her own interview questions. Then she created a biography of of her mother's story of how she came to the United States and how she's still practicing the Mexican traditions and how she has adopted the new traditions here in the United States. And, and this student was also able to create a narrative drawing and integrate that into the VFE. So um, she's telling the story through the bi biography image from the interview that she created but as well through the the drawing that she created of her mother. And through the bottom of the text, there is a link here. And the students also made connections with other students globally of, of how they're here in the United States. And they were also able to learn about other immigration stories about um, other students globally. And this is and this here taught them that they're not here in this alone, that there's other students going going through this as well. So and here I'm going to go back to the through the VFE. So here the students were able to learn that to them it's a norm to come um, to the to come to the United States, to come to school. For them, that is normal, to come to a whole new country every day just to come to school and go back to their country and, and live there. And to them, it's normal. But if we look, if we look at this, this is not a norm to come to another country every day and, and then to go back home um, just to just to get the learning. So I wanted the students to be able to make a connection of how this is something very empowering, what they're doing, just to come to learn. So here the students created um, created tags, and I wanted to see how I can make that connection with them. So we brainstorm ideas, and, and the one that we have here is how how we have the what it means to them to be mexican american and they were able to tell their their story of of how empowered they were of what it was of what it meant to them to be a mexican american being able to to accept and adopt those new traditions that that the students had we also have here other tags um where we have where students where students created the traditions from Mexico and the traditions from from America and the students also created that text in English and the students created that text in Spanish and again as a as a remind, reminder these are all English language learners so the students were able to practice both both languages and and then um the students also created they created um links where they added videos of of how they saw of what their traditions were in mexico and what their traditions were here in the united states the students were also able to create and identify themselves with similarities and differences with both cultures and how they can integrate those both um, both in the community and the way that i did this was um i created a vfe myself and my vfe was it was named by National Arts Without Borders Sin Fronteras Project. And I wanted to make a connection myself with the students. So I created a VFE where I identified myself with him and I and I told my story of for of how my parents immigrated here to the United States and how I was able to adopt both traditions. And the students then began identifying the transnational themes and their own, and then they began making their own personal connections with the family members. That's when all the interviews start, began happening. And they were able to see that 
all of that is in, in the community that they're all part of. Everything was all around them. And then students discuss their own experiences. And we see here in the cover photo, this is a cover photo that they created. And I wanted them to tell their story of what it meant to them to be Mexican American through an image um, that, that was inspiring to others. So I wanted them to tell their own story through a picture, which is their cover photo. And this picture here, this drawing, it has a, it has a lot of detail. So one side is parted in how they see themselves in Mexico, and the other side is parted on how they see themselves in America, where they're still adopting both both traditions and both celebrations and how they're still having those both life experiences on each side. And we're, I'm going to demonstrate here the other VFV from my other student of how she sees herself in Mexico and how she sees herself in America. So this is my other student and here is her cover photo. And this is how she sees herself in Mexico, and this is how, this is how she sees herself in the United States. So my English language learners were able to use and make and make a global connections with all of their surroundings that they had around them by being able to adopt both. My students, my students also created, they were able to create audios, they created, they created videos, they created tags, they went from the, my English language learners went from the traditional paper-based learning, and they were able to transfer all of that to becoming lit, um, literate with technology. So they were able to transfer everything that they created in paper and transfer all of that to technology. So not only did it help them um, being able to adopt and accept to be Mexican and American, but it also helped them to become literate with all of the technology that they have around them. They were able to oral rehearse by, by being able to practice um, oral rehearsing. They were able to also become literate in writing. They were also able to become literate in, in reading as well because um, they had to research all of the um, history behind the American traditions and all of the history behind the Mexican traditions as well. Thank you so much, Suezen. We really are inspired by you, inspired by your students. And in a few minutes, we'll get a chance to pose questions to our whole presenter group. So if you are a member of the audience, think about what questions you may have for Veronica, Yusra, Wen, and Zuezen. But before then, if we could go on to the next slide, we've hope, we hope you've, we've inspired you today to see a little bit more about the worlds of experience for language learning. We have created a full website that has many opportunities to learn a little bit more about this approach. Um, for example, we have many student examples that come from Zuezen's class and other K-12 educational contexts. So you get a chance to see not only student examples, teacher examples of what the flexibility of the instructional model virtual field experience can offer. This website also has sort of the background experiences of what this instructional model is all about. And let's go back to the slides. Scan this QR code quickly because it will take you directly to the website and we will, you can explore more fully uh, the instructional model. We want to say thank you today as well. We are continuing to have a professional learning series 
where we are working with teachers such as yourselves in K-12, in higher education, in community colleges. And if you were inspired by what you saw today, we want to invite you to fill out this short interest form because we are recruiting teachers for our fall 2023 instructional learning series and our spring 2024 instructional learning series. It is a Saturday session where you come for two hours and you learn how to map onto your curriculum how you might use and create a VFE for your own experiences. We invite you to take a few moments to write to us. And now, if we go on to the next slide, we have the chance to hear from you about your inspirations, comments, connections, and questions. Thank you. Thank you all very much for this wonderful presentation. Uh, we will now open the floor for questions. So remember that you can write your questions in the chat and we will transfer them to our specialist. Please try to ask your questions as concisely as possible. We have some comments here. Um, creating biographies by drawing pictures. Uh, it helps like, students to express better. They write more than we can imagine. We have a question here. How do you organize the creation of these uh, BFS in class? Is there a period of supervised work followed by individual work? What are the dynamics? So is that maybe? Uh, refer to yes. That. Yes. So, I we have a curriculum here in we have a curriculum that we have to follow. So the way that I I organize that is I attach the the standards and the skills that the students need to be taught at the time, and I integrate that and make that connection with the VFE that I want to have with my students. So for example, I want to make a global connection with the students, but also a connection that the students can relate to so that it's something that it inspires them and it empowers them to want to take more initiative, to want to create the project. And, and first I look at topics um, that the students can relate to the most um, within within their community and and that's where I begin and and then I look at the standards where I can I can help make that connection and tie that together and and I create four topics it can be more I create four topics where where the students will have more interest in so for example for me I had um, immigration story that, that was one of them. The other one was the similarities and differences amongst both communities and then what it means to be Mexican-American and the traditions and celebrations that both of them can, can adopt. So you just look for four, at least four topics that the students can, can relate to the most and, and tie that into to the tags. And that is that is a very good starting point because that that gives you um, a starting point for for each of the tags. I hope that I answered your question. Um, it is easy to create a VFE. It's very very simple. Um, I would first recommend for the students to to do everything on the traditional base paper uh, paper based and any method that you have already that you're already using in the classroom and then transferring that over to to the technology so that everything is written on paper first and then you transfer that over to the technology we have another one here where and how can we create the bfs well, fantastic. Uh, would you like to add on to this one? To this question? This one is all Vero. Vero. Okay, so where, well, 
first scan the code, join us in, in the professional learning series. It's, it's, it's a process, like any process, there's a learning curve. And it's a process that we have with a lot of discussion, support. It's, we create this sense of community. Um, so we support each other in, in like exchanging ideas, helping with technical support. Uh, also, if there are questions about content, just to make sure that it's a very meaningful um, a virtual field experience. So it is easy. Join us, please, in, in the teacher uh, professional series. Thank you. Uh, this is very similar to the previous one. Does it require a lot of technical knowledge to use it? It doesn't require that much. <laughs> It's it's a process, right? We 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 can use it, it's a concept. Virtual field experiences are a concept. So we can use different tools to make virtual field experiences. So a lot of people have started from zero and, and that's part of the learning because uh, we have to develop our own digital communities too as teachers, right? Together with our students in these uh, directional expertise. Thank you. Uh, we have comments. Oh, we have another question here. Um, can you share again the information about the, B, the VFE training? Sure, I'm going to share my screen one more time. If uh, anyone would like to scan the code, uh, it will take them directly to the interest form and they can fill it out and submit. And we have also shared our uh, slides with the organizers of the conference. So you can right. go back and explore the VFEs on your own and look at all the links, uh, take your time, right? And, and participate with us. Thank you. Uh, we have comments. Um, um, we have here, it's a bonding experience with their own culture, their families, and the culture of the United States. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you for all your insights this afternoon. This will be invaluable resource for all of us. So thank you so much.